So with the main printer pretty much assembled, we'll concentrate on finishing up the enclosure in this chapter, so we'll crack on with bodywork and electronics. So we'll start with the frame then, and back to our metal parts package in order to locate the final two front corner profiles. In essence, it's the two longer profiles with the rectangular cutouts. Taking a closer look, one of the profiles incorporates a single round opening near the top, so they end with the protruding flanges. This profile will seat on the front right side of the printer frame. Align it so that the round cutout lines up with the calibration screw opening and the smaller hole lines up with the thread, after which we can go ahead and insert an M3x4 screw to secure into position, with a second screw just around the corner, and a final two M3x4 screws down the bottom of the same profile. The left side profile incorporates two round openings, just like the right side, one is for the calibration screw, and the second is for the door sensor to poke through. So with it in place, secure with another two M3x4 screws up top, and a further two down below. You can quickly check your door sensor next by using the flat side of your multi-tool by pressing against it. It should move in so it's flush with the metal frame and provide a clear audible click as it does so. If not, adjust the screw behind the sensor to move it in the desired direction. Ok, we have a final four edge profiles remaining in the package. Note that the profile with the two small openings in the middle will be the piece that sits on the back of the printer's frame. So starting with this piece, orientate it so that the protruding flange is facing the top left corner, as shown here, and then place any other profile on this side, so that the flange sides in underneath the left profile, before securing with a single M3x4 screw. Next, add the next profile to the opposite right side, although this time the flange faces downwards and slides in underneath the bottom profile, securing with another M3x4 screw, and then the final profile across the top, again making sure the flanges are always sitting beneath the next piece, securing at either end with M3x4 screws. Now leaving us with the top of the frame complete. Remember the two openings in the middle of the rear profile. This side needs to sit on the rear side of the printer, so proceed to lower the frame down into position. When doing so, take note that the rear profile protruding lip slides in behind the rear panel, while on all corners the top frame must sit so that they cover the tabs with threaded openings. Leaving us free to now secure into place with two M3x4 black screws in every corner. So slowly make your way around the entire frame, ensuring screws are in nice and snug, and ensuring the tabs are underneath the edge profiles in each corner. After which we can finish off by inserting three nylon rivets across the top of the back panel. So with the main frame complete then, we'll go ahead and secure the rear end of the Core XY assembly next. To do this, align the Core XY assembly by pushing up a little, just enough so that the threaded holes line up with the screw openings in the rear profiles, and insert another two M3x4 screws on one corner, and another two on the opposite rear corner. Frame now complete and secure, so we'll move on to the filament sensor next, for which we'll need a few parts, namely the filament sensor base and the side lever, both from the printed parts package, as well as a small metal ball and accompanying magnets, all from the electronics and fasteners package. Starting with the lever then, insert a magnet into the dedicated opening on the end, and then insert the ball into the corresponding opening inside the sensor base, after which we insert the lever with the magnet into the base, orientated so that the magnet end of the lever is against the ball, while we secure the lever with a single M3x10 screw. This screw should go far enough to hold the lever, but do not over tighten. The lever must be able to move freely, so back off the screw if need be, and ensure the lever is able to move relatively free. With this done, partially insert the second magnet into the pocket on the base assembly, just enough so it holds for now, and then move the lever. The magnet must be orientated so it repels the magnet in the lever, keeping the ball pushed upwards. 
If not, remove the magnet and turn it around. And once the magnets successfully repel each other, proceed to push the magnet down to lock it in place. Both should be flush with the top surface. With movement verified then, we can go ahead and install the sensor itself, along with the sensor cable, both located in the electronics bag. Install the cable to the sensor. Take care with orientation here. The brown wire connects to the plus 5 volt pin, while the white connects to the GND pin. This is important for successful functioning of the sensor module. After which we'll install this into the sensor housing assembly. To do this, insert the cable into the groove first, far enough so that the plastic connector is approximately in the middle of the sensor base, and then fold it back on itself while pushing down into the dedicated groove, on top of the cables just inserted. Note how the lever fits into the sensor. Make sure the lever can move freely and is not obstructed by any of the cables. Before securing the sensor with a single M2 by 8 screw going in from the bottom. No need to over tighten here, just until snug. Once done, insert two M3 square nuts into the top corners of the assembly, pushing so they seat right down into place and align with the holes. And just before we install the cover, double check to ensure the lever is free moving and the magnets repel, pushing the ball upwards into its dedicated space. The way this works then is when a piece of filament is fed into the sensor from one side, it will push the ball down and out of the way, which in turn pushes the lever up and out of the sensor, hence activating the sensor and telling it filament is inserted. When the filament is removed, the magnets repel and push the ball up into the gap while the lever is pushed back down creating a break in the sensor, thus informing it that no filament is inserted. Pretty smart. Anyways, we can go ahead and place the cover over the top and secure with a M3 by 8 screw on either side. These are going straight into plastic, so you'll feel some resistance, but tighten until snug. Do not over tighten as you'll risk stripping the created threads. Also make sure you do not touch the center screw at all here. Remember this was already set at the correct place so that the lever can freely move inside. Finally, insert a plastic collet into the opening on the same side as the cable. Filament sensor now complete and we can go ahead and get this installed on the printer. We start by inserting a zip tie from bottom to top on the right side of the core XY frame, just below the PTFE tube. And with the end of the PTFE tube pushed as far as it will go into the collet on the sensor assembly, Line the sensor up around the center of the frame and proceed to secure the sensor cable using the zip tie just installed. No need to go too tight here, just enough to hold the cable, yet provide some room for adjustment later. Next, guide the cable through the upper hole alongside other cables and around the back, guide it into the electronics chassis via the left hole, connecting it just beneath the hole to the port labelled filament on the expansion board. We'll tidy the cables a little next, so use two zip ties to bundle them together, taking care not to tighten too hard as you could end up damaging the cables, and trimming off the tails. Note that they need to pass above and clear the two openings on the rear panel just below. Ok so back to electronics for a final time now, as we need to install the NFC coil, along with its short cable located in the electronics and chamber parts package. Begin by peeling off the yellow protective film from the supplied adhesive tape and stick it to the flat side of the NFC coil. Once in place, remove the film from the opposite side and with the electronic box cover in hand, which you'll find in the printed parts package, proceed to stick the NFC board to the inner side with the single connector facing toward the edge of the cover in this orientation. Finally, we need to install the cable to the tiny connector. Apply even pressure until you hear a click. Take care not to misalign or use excessive pressure as you could cause irreversible damage. And repeat with the opposite end, which connects to the tiny port labelled NFC just beside the heatbed power cables. With that done, ensure these two threaded holes are not obstructed by any cables and are completely free, so that the cover can slide into place, and secure with two M3x10 screws until snug. 
after which we need to check to ensure the NFC cable passes in the gap between the heat bed power cables and the Ethernet port, so it's not damaged when the electronics board is covered, which we'll go ahead and do next in fact. Start by tidying the cables and securing using the two remaining zip ties. Again, no need to go super tight here as you could end up damaging the cables, just enough to hold the cables in place and carefully snip the tails. Before sliding the metal electronics chassis cover into place, taking care not to pinch any cables, and secure with six M3x4 screws, just enough so they're nice and snug. We'll finish off the rear then with the final metal cover for the top bunch of cables, aligned so that the cables run through the top tray, while placing the cover into the recess, pushing forward and upwards to engage it with the rear panel, after which it can be secured from the front side using two M3x4 screws. And with that, the rear of the printer, as well as all main electronics are complete at this stage, and all looking nice and neat. We'll carry on round the front side now with the right side panel located in the metal parts package and you're specifically after the side with the screw openings in the very middle here as we'll use these to attach the spool holder found in the printed parts package. Notice the lip on the spool holder is slightly more raised on one side. This raised lip needs to point upwards when installed so place it into the middle of the metal sheet taking care to ensure the raised lip points towards the three openings just above it, while keeping the holder in place, secure with four M3x8 screws from the opposite side. Once the first screw is secure, you can lay the side down flat to make the others easier. We're going straight into plastic here, so secure until snug without over tightening and stripping any created threads. With that in place, we need to install the orange side handle, also from the printed parts package. Prepare it by inserting a black plastic collet into the second hole in the handle, just here, and in order to install this to the right panel, we need to attach the filament sensor at the same time. So place the right side metal sheet assembly on the right side of the printer, ensure the U-shaped cutouts in the corners are facing upwards, then attach the right handle to the right metal sheet and push one M3x8 screw through the rear hole in the handle and the metal sheet so it protrudes on the inner side, before securing to the filament sensor on the opposite side. Then repeat with the other end of the sensor using the second hole. So from inside it should look like this. Finally, secure the panel by inserting nylon rivets, four on one side, another four on the other, and three across the bottom, so 11 in total. With the panel now secure, insert a short PTFE tube into the previously inserted collet, pushing it in as far as it will go, and test the path by inserting a piece of filament while listening for the magnets in the filament sensor click. And that's the side panel, filament spool holder, and filament entry into the sensor now installed. At this point, looking at the filament sensor from the inside, ensure the sensor cable is relatively straight and does not bulge too close to the metal rod. If it does, push it across a little to remove any slack. The opposite side is much easier in comparison. Line up the handle to the top side of the sheet and secure with two M3x5 screws. Before placing the panel on the left side of the printer and securing with another 11 nylon rivets in the same locations as the opposite side. And with that, the entire body is now complete. The printer is pretty much assembled at this point, with everything looking nice and neat now. All that's left then is to attach the top panel, the front door along with some other trim components, and the main front display screen, all of which we'll cover in the next chapter.